welcome to a special bonus episode of Character Creation Spotlight, everyone. In this bonus segment, we'll be shining a light on some current or up-and-coming games to keep an eye out for. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan, and today we are welcoming Austin Taylor and Amanda Call to talk about Deimos Academy, a horror RPG that lets you explore a creepy boarding school through a coloring book with paper dolls. Welcome to Character Creation Spotlight. Uh, it's really great to have you both here. Happy to be here. Yeah, thanks so much for having us. Mm-hmm. Uh, Austin, could you go and start us off with telling a bit about yourself, uh, what sort of projects you have going on? Yeah, I'm Austin. My pronouns are he, they, she. I am a podcaster, narrative designer, and game performer because I love to be busy, I guess. Um, so some stuff I have going on right now, I'm a cast member on Transplaner RPG, which is an actual play. Um, I'm a designer on this in Deimos Academy. Um, I have a few things that aren't officially announced yet that I'm writing for. Um, and I think that's it that I'm like actively working on. Some stuff I've worked on before. I worked on Archon and I've worked on uh, Brinkwood. So those are some things I worked on recently that are Brinkwood's out. I don't think Archon is out just yet. It's hard to keep track of stuff when yeah. you're just like a writer and not the designer because they kind of like have you write and they take it and they're like, all right. And you're like, oh, okay. And th- that's kind of it. <laughs> so you get an email with your PDF copy. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. You're, you're in a lot of stuff. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I, I see my plate is full and then, and then I see what you do online and I'm like, oh, that's a full plate. <laughs> I am officially at the saying no stage. Yep. I told Amanda and Banana the other day when people ask me of like, I if I say yes to one more thing, I won't have time for stuff I'd like to, I, that I want to do that is like just my stuff. Yeah, exactly. Wonderful. Uh, Amanda, how about yourself? Hi, I'm Amanda Call, she, her. Uh, I am an artist in the tabletop gaming world. I was the artist for Deimos Academy um, and kind of like art director. I'm in charge of like all the visual stuff for this mm. game. Um, I do a lot of other uh, illustration for different tabletop games and including uh, like Skirmisher Publishing, Fairlight Games, um, I, like like so many i can't think of them all right now Um, (laughs) and i'm also a comic artist i have my ongoing web comic age of night and i'm also in the middle of working on a graphic novel right now which should be coming out later this year oh very cool wonderful well thank you both for being here uh since this is an abridged version of our normal format we'll just be sticking to the highlights of the system uh with a special focus on character creation uh so without further ado how about we find out what this game is all about What's in a game? So, uh, could you start off by telling us a bit about the core concept for Deimos Academy? Uh, yeah, I can do that. Um, so, Deimos Academy is a, as you said at the top, horror coloring book RPG, which is a mouthful of things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, you are essentially, you are an alumni returning to the school for a reunion, I say with a question mark, like I'm not the writer. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) um, You're returning to school for a reunion and you get there and stuff is a little freaky. There's no one there. The doors are all locked and you can't get out. You're just left to explore. Oh, boy. That's it sounds like a very great thing. So so it feels like that's kind of the setting that we're playing with. Right. Um, Is there any other details about the setting that you want to go into? Like, like what, what, what's, what's special about this spooky school? Uh, yeah. So there's an ad lib at the start when you are in creation, actually, um, and working on your characters where you kind of ad lib about what the school focused on, why you were, why you went to the school before, what kind of thing the boarding school specialized in. Like, was it an art boarding school? Was it like a prep school for college, et cetera? Oh, okay. And... The other thing that links you and all the characters together is you all have supernatural powers. Ooh. Whereas, assumingly, other students did not. Okay. That's kind of up to you and the other players to decide, because it is GMless. It's not like a one person leading the narrative in yeah. that way. Um, so it's kind of meant to run like you and your friends had these weird powers uh, that you hid from people, because you assume no one else did. But that's kind of mm-hmm. left open if other people did or not. Well, that's interesting, because, like, 
you know, they could, but they're, they might just be hiding it too, huh? Yeah, exactly. Oh, I love that. Which is something I didn't think about until literally just now doing this interview. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty cool. I, I love the mystery aspect of that too. That's, uh, that sounds really fun. So well, what, what sort of materials do we need? I know we said it was a coloring book and there's paper dolls involved. Yeah. So the game comes with, it's actually like two separate books. The first one is your rule book that explains like how you play the game and how you run through everything. And the other guy, the other book for the game is your materials. And mm. so that is um, coloring sheets, which are all the different rooms of the school that you can explore. Mm. And so there's lots of copies of different ones and you have options to visit different ones each time you play through. There's like a dozen different rooms, but each playthrough you'll play probably only visit three or four of them. Oh, And so you have a lot of replayability that way, but you'll have a whole bunch of them. You use those as like your coloring sheets where you explore the rooms with your characters and interact with different objects in the room in order to have your prompts for your role play and how the game plays out. Um, You do also have paper dolls. Those also come in that coloring second coloring book of consumables. Mm -hmm. Um, And they're pretty simple as far as you have like nine different. I think we ended up with nine. Yes, I say as if I didn't draw them all. (laughs) (laughs) Who are we? What did we do? What are we doing here? Um, (laughs) You have nine different characters to choose from. So you have a lot of variety and then they are just like blank outlines. So you can color them in however you want or you can draw extra stuff on them. Oh, and nice. Yeah, and they're just a very simple cutout and tent fold, and then they stand up, and then you get to move them around the rooms as you interact with them. Um, you do oh, also nice. have an element of gameplay where there is clothing that can be added to the paper dolls too, but that's bad. That means oh. things are that means things are going badly if that happens. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's so interesting. I I don't think I've seen a, an RPG that has that sort of uh, craft element uh, before. I, I'm sure it exists. I'm sure Sure, there's uh, others kind of like that out there, but th- this sounds really intriguing. I like yeah, it. I've heard of a couple of other like coloring based RPGs. I haven't mm. played any of them, but I am not familiar with any others that also involve like the paper dolls and the coloring. And it's just like arts and crafts time and also yeah. creepy boarding school horror. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So what what sort of characters can people make in this game then? Uh, honestly, your imagination is the limit. Um, there's no... I can't think of any kind of limitation we put on character creator besides you're all, you're all coming back for the same reunion, so you're all in the same grade and you all graduated the same year. You, you can decide what year that is together if you like. We graduated in like 1984 or we graduated in like 2011 or if you wanted to be like the teen reunion is in 2022 mm-hmm. or whatever you want um but other than that i mean it's pretty freeform we have some tables if you can't think of like personality traits mm-hmm. or there's a trait there's a section for like what's a talent you had when you're at the school what's something you like have now mm-hmm. um so you have some tables for that if you like can't think of anything that you could just like roll on like i don't know oh i love uh, random tables <laughs> <laughs> but other than that um you can really be anyone you want just with the same caveat of like at some point you were friends with the other people here you may not be friends now we've we've done play tests where like one of the people is like no one likes to talk to you anymore mm. uh but you were friends at some point oh okay so the only thing is like you're someone who for some reason would agree to go to this reunion so you're to be at playing this game mm. um not necessarily constraints of like other games was kind of like you have to be want to be with the people because it's more of like you have to want to be at the reunion you're going to get trapped with these people it's a horror setting right. you don't really have to like them you're just trapped alone yeah oh that makes sense yeah the, the only other prescriptive part of character creation is that the character that you choose the only thing that's like already preset on the character sheet is whatever your supernatural power is right so you okay. choose that's kind of like your i would be like kind of analogous to your class and some other yeah. systems so like you get you choose to be the telekinetic or the clairvoyant or whichever one of those mm-hmm. and that's pretty much the only thing that's already decided for you and you just pick one of those options Oh, lovely. Okay. That makes that makes a lot of sense then. Uh very cool. Well, I, I'm wondering, uh, would we be able to walk through a a, a character creation? 
right now? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Let's make some people. All right. Can, you're going to we... you're going to have to edit out some clicking while I open one up. <laughs> That's perfectly fine. <laughs> I have to get to my Google Drive and open one up for you. <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Wait, let me mute my mic real quick." Yeah. <laughs> I can see. Ooh. I'm looking at uh gosh. Okay. So, I see I see there is uh for, for lack of a better word, the class. Uh, so like the telepath. And then there's the consumed telepath. Uh, what are the differences there? <laughs> yeah, so um, consumed, that's the, the bad thing that can happen. So mm. you, you, as a player, are trying to escape the school that you are trapped in. You are also um, interacting with the school as you're going through and gathering these like memories of your time when you were attending as a teenager Mm -hmm. um but that can through the roles that you're making there that can go badly and basically the school can kind of start winning you over to its side of whatever its terrible evil is you also kind of describe what the manifestation of the evil of the school is through oh. game through gameplay that's another yeah. thing that we do not have as prescriptive that's something that you come up with collaboratively as you play okay. um, but yeah if you're doing poorly or if you're playing to lose because that sounds fun to you then you get to be taken over to the side of the evil and your abilities change a little bit at the end and in like the final confrontation where everyone is making the final bid for escape you can actually be working against them Oh, fun. So you, uh, if I remember right, because I'm not on layout stuff, but like you flip, you like, we just flip the sheet. Right. Is that what we're doing yeah. right, Amanda? Yeah. Yeah, because it looks like it folds, right? Yep. Yeah. That's really cool. I like that. Uh, I'm getting kind of a, a house on Haunted Hill uh, vibe to that. Uh, where somebody can betray an, at the end. Yeah, there's definitely an element of that kind of in there, too. Like we were that. like, yeah, because we were kind of like, well, what happens if you like if you lose, if you do end up doing poorly, like what's the consequence going to be for doing poorly? And we don't want the game to just end. We mm-hmm. don't want you to just not get to do anything for yeah. the rest of the yeah. game. So it's like, all right, well, you're you're bad now. <laughs> is, it, yeah. is it is it possible for everybody to go bad? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> you'd, you'd have to roll pretty bad, I think. Yeah, it's it's cuz it's a it's a d6. It's, it's a 2d 2d6? 1d6. 1d6, yeah. 1d6. You get there's ways you can get to, that's right. Yeah. Uh, but it's a 1d6 system, so it's a pretty that that gradient that yeah. I feel like people are pretty used to for like d6 pass fail system, so mm-hmm. But you, I mean, I guess the whole table could have really bad rolls yeah, that night. It's statistically unlikely, but possible. Yeah. Oh, that would be fun, though. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I mean, yeah, that would be cool, because then you can talk about, like, all right, well, how do we uh, go out and just get more people? Yeah. Just just uh, go on a recruiting binge for the... Uh, <laughs> the... You become school recruiters. <laughs> <laughs> But like evil, uh-huh. we're evil school recruiters. Yeah, no, oh, that sounds awesome. Um, yeah, let's let's go ahead and make a a, a group together if we could. Sure. Um, sure. Uh, so we've got it looks like uh, six medium clairvoyant, astral traveler, telekinetic, telepath. Yeah, so there's five different classes to choose from. It looks like. Um, so uh, do, is it is this a game where you? want to fill that particular niche everybody can only pick uh different classes or different uh uh, character types or powers i guess you could call it or can you have or can you have two two telepaths in the group and and just have fun with it no i don't think we've talked about or made a rule around that so i don't think it matters okay i know in a lot of like powered by the apocalypse style games it's like this is your niche and only yeah. your character fills that niche. So it is kind of cool that you can have the same same abilities. Uh, I, yeah. I like that thought. And I, I like the thought of two telepaths just like <laughs> messing with each other telepathically <laughs> while nobody else can hear them. Right. Uh, <laughs> that sounds fun. Um, OK, so if we, I guess if we each want to create a character quick, uh, sure. what do we have to do first? Uh, uh, so pick whichever um, archetype you would like, whatever your power would like to be. 
I'll be a medium. I will talk to ghosts. Ooh. I'm I'm between uh, telekinetic, because um, I've always wanted to move things with my mind, or astral traveler, because that sounds amazing, too. That is a fun one. Uh, you know, I think I'll go uh, telekinetic, because that's just more n- a nice visual, I yes. think. Yes, yes. I'll be an astral traveler. Oh, sweet. All right, so we've got our powers. Mm -hmm. Uh, Astral Traveler, uh, Kinetic, Telekinetic, and Medium. Perfect. All right, so what's next on the list? Uh, Next, you would want to do your name pronouns, and then we would talk about what year we graduated the school. Oh, okay. Let's see. Are we in in modern times? Uh, What what sort of uh, boarding school are we coming from? Well... And that's so that's something that would usually in the if you look in the uh, side by here, there's the alumni letter. Mm-hmm. And that's like the ad lib I talked about. Very cool. Um, so that's where you decide like the year um, you decide, like why they're having the reunion, mm-hmm. when it is, where it is. Uh, and that's kind of when you would want to talk about, like, what kind of school it was. OK, uh, it seems like this might be a pretty quick process do we want to go through this real quick yeah sure um that sounds fun yeah so the the alumni letter because you do basically like creating the school is also kind of part of character creation almost because the school is a character we just do this like absolutely collaboratively there's a relationship sheet yeah okay all right so uh the alumni letter begins with dear esteemed alumni it is year whichever year we want it to be, the perfect time for a 15-year reunion. Some of us haven't seen each other since graduation. So what year do we want it to be now as the game is being played? Ooh. Uh, near future? Like 2050? That's really weird. That's the year I was thinking of. <laughs> <laughs> all right, then I guess it's 2050. All right, if it was 2050, then that means we would have all graduated in 2035. Uh-huh. Yes. All right, so the reason we are hosting this reunion now is because, and then there are three options. First option, we've received a large donation and we'd like to offer it to any alumni who return. Option two, we'd like you to speak with prospective students. Option three, we're being interviewed by press and they want to know about your experience. Because this can also help you think about character creation, like which you you didn't make a person who would be enticed by one of those choices. Yeah, exactly. And, and... Honestly, the first one sounds super, like, sinister. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> when has a school ever given me money exactly. instead of taking it? <laughs> exactly. Come, have some free money. Hmm. No strings attached. Hmm. I, I kind of want to pick that one because that one sounds That's, like... Re- that, sounds, that sounds good because it yeah. is suspicious. We've received uh-huh. a large donation and we'd like to offer it to any alumni who return. All right. The letter continues. We have arranged a day of celebration starting at 11 a.m. on date. So we can just choose like what time of year this is happening, basically. Mm -hmm. So what are we thinking? Uh, Season, summer, fall, winter, spring? Oh, it's July, February 29th. (laughs) (laughs) February 29th. Is that a leap year? The 2050. 2050. Bitch. I have no I idea. Know. I don't, I don't think it. I don't think it is. It's got to be a multiple four, it, right? It, it it's a leap year now. That's what's. Oh weird. no! It is now. Whether oh, or not science, it be. science added a, an extra day this year because <laughs> it's 2050, and they needed to readjust some cal- calendar calculations. Exactly. Right. Okay. They're like February 29th. We all said what? And you took out your phone. They're like, well, look at that. 29th. Wait, it exists that now. Wasn't there before. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that wasn't there. All right. Uh, It continues. As you all know, the Academy is located at place. So now we get to choose the location. Where is Deimos Academy? Mm. And it can be broad. It could be like Pacific Northwest or it could be like very specific, like Mm. Hell, Michigan. I want it because I I like the whole like, uh, um, I don't know, like that that small town sort of vibe that that Stephen King kind of latches onto a lot. Yeah. Uh, so like uh, like east the northeast of the U.S. or mm-hmm. so might be yeah. a good place. Yeah. So we'll say northeast. Yeah. Do we do we have a specific state in the northeast we want to? It's got to be Maine. 
It's got to be Maine. Okay. Uh, Maine. Just uh, super northeast. I actually live in the in Maine, so Oh, there you go. <laughs> so, do you do you want rocky uh do you want rocky gothic coast or do you want uh spooky pine trees? Oh. Can we have a little bit of both? Okay, a can, little can, bit of Can we can we make up a Uh sure, we'll put it on um Deer Isle. <laughs> Deer Isle. Oh, that sounds Okay, yeah, that sounds super spooky. Okay, so it's on Deer Isle, Maine. That is a basically just a, a pine-covered mountain sitting off the coast. Oh, fantastic. There Nothing you go. ever bad happens on an island off the coast. <laughs> <Never>. <laughs> All right, so please dress appropriately for the weather. Lunch, dinner, and light beverages will be provided. Please register at your earliest convenience. All expenses have been paid for. Children, significant others, and any other guests are not allowed. We will oh. be expecting just you. See you there, sincerely, and then your options are whether this came from... I think it's it got cut off here for some reason, but I think it was the class president the from the year we graduated our the current headmaster or there was someone else i can't remember what the other one was yeah it's like uh it's like headmaster uh president president or or uh like alumni rep or whatever I yeah think the last one. something like that so whoever this came from hmm. okay I, let's go class president just because why not all right and our former class president has sent this out Okay, so that is a little alumni letter. Yeah. That sets this up. All right, so now if you wanted to go back to your character sheet. So now we have an idea of, like, what this place is, what this is like. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. So let's see. It's, it's the near future. I'm sure names won't have changed too much by then. Um, gosh, they'd be... They'd be just starting school about a couple years ago at this point. Yes. Uh, late, late teens. Yeah. Okay. That's wild. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My, my kids are like going to be graduating class of 2031 and 2033. And I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my, my son just started kindergarten this year, so. Uh, super, super fun to think about him graduating in the uh, 2030s. Yeah, so if your son just started kindergarten, then he'd be graduating class of 2035. Wild. Yeah. Hope he doesn't go to Deimos Academy. Hopefully not. <laughs> if, you get a, if you get a letter, you know they just write in the trash. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're not going with that. We're Sorry. not doing that. <laughs> uh, so I think my medium's name is going to be Helen, she, her pronouns. Hmm. And we established graduated 2035. Wonderful. Mm. Do you have a name for your astral traveler, Austin? Uh, yeah, Steve. Steve, okay. Nice. Um, I'm going to go I with... Like really mundane names. There you go. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with Arthur. Uh, he, him pronouns. All right. The next prompt reads, where did your parents live while you were at the school? So this is kind of to establish, like, are you local to the school? Um, mm -hmm. Are you coming in from another state? Are you coming in from another country? And kind of also can help give a little bit more background for where your character is coming from. Okay. Because this is a boarding school, so it could be right. across the coast. It could be right. whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just going to go with what I know, uh, Wisconsin. There you go. Just a nice Midwestern boy. <laughs> uh, I'll probably be, I'll just be local. I guess, mm, like, local isn't in, like, New England. Yeah. They're pretty close together over there. They are all pretty close. Uh, <laughs> my character is going to have come from Virginia. Ooh. All right. So the next section the next prompt is what was your reputation in high school now this one it there's a couple of boxes next to it because um there's the opportunity of if you are reminded of your reputation while you are in the game if for something for some reason something in the game reminds you of this and this is something that you can draw on as your relevant experience and role play it out you're able to um alter your role twice per game mm. So you can enhance or, again, if you're playing to lose, make your role worse. 
<laughs> and now it, it, I'm, I'm reading ahead a little bit. Uh, do we define our, uh, like, in high school, did we have our powers or not or up to us? Uh, you, you did. We did, yeah. That is established okay. that we did. Wonderful. Okay. Yeah, this is, it's established. Um, yeah, it's on the sheet. Like, it, I think everyone has their own question about, like, you discovered your powers right. in a, like, a situation and how. Yeah. Um, so it is established. Um, it's really up to you how much you did or didn't use your powers then. Okay. Or now. Oh, absolutely. Um, so my reputation in high school. Um, I'm, I'm going to say prankster. Because nice. if you can move things with your mind, that's that's perfect for pranking, I guess. If you're in yeah. high school. I definitely feel like that's a, a solid concept. <laughs> 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 All right. So let's see. I'm going to say my reputation was uh, the the overachiever. Uh, I think I'm a I was a burnout. OK. All right. So what's our next prompt? Our next prompt now is. How do you define yourself now? All right. So what so this is where you can also set up kind of like how your your character has grown or changed over the years. Like if there is hmm. any dissonance between the person you were in high school versus who you are now, or if you're kind of very much still on that same track. Yeah, I think my character's grown up a bit uh, and left their prankster life behind uh, for the most part. But like... Uh, I, I think they got into doing practical special effects uh, for somebody like Disney or something like that and and utilizes their telekinesis to do certain things that no other special effects artist can do. Nice. Uh, but then, like, tells people, oh, yeah, I've got this special, you know, rigging that only I know how to use. It's a trade secret. A trade secret, yeah. <laughs> not, not even my, the company that, that pays my bills knows. <laughs> Nice. But I get, I get good results, so why not? Mm -hmm. Nice, that's good. I think, I think I'm, st I'm like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I'm a burnout, but I'm still kind of a burnout. Uh, I'm like, I found a way to like channel that very carefree, like loose energy. Mm. Um, I think I do like, what's the word I'm looking for? Like life coaching. Mm. But I'm like. I'm not like because I feel like some life coaches are like very prim proper people. I'm like the cool life coach right. and everyone else at the life coach agency like is super annoyed by me. But my clients give me the best reviews. <laughs> uh, Love it. So is that like uh, kind of a, a Chris Farley uh, sort of uh, from the old SNL uh, <laughs> living in a van down by the river? <laughs> Uh, you, know, you know, I don't get that reference. Oh. <laughs> I know who Chris is, but yeah, I do not he, know he had this that. very famous skit on SNL where he was a life coach, but he was mm -hmm. just this like hyped up on uh, probably cocaine. I'm guessing just mm -hmm. super hyper and mm -hmm. like very... he's talking about I'm living in a van down by the river, and if you don't get your oh, okay. life together, you're gonna be living in a van. Down by the river. <laughs> it's just so good. Very intense. Yep. Gotcha. Yep. All right. I'm going to say that uh, Helen is now a like small time politician. Like she's been on city council for a few years mm -hmm. and she's trying to mm -hmm. work her way up to like uh, like state legislature. And so she's just constantly in that like campaigning and schmoozing zone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so the next prompt says you discovered your powers, whichever, whatever they are, when you were in a scary situation. How did you find your powers? So I think um, Arthur found his powers. Um, there was a big storm uh, in his freshman year at, uh, at the academy, and uh, somebody had gotten caught out off the island and uh, the boat capsized and they were in trouble and Arthur was just happened to be around. But he was scared to swim out there. He was he was an OK swimmer, but he was scared to swim out there. But then, like, somehow this unlocked his telekinesis, um, pulling the student to shore, uh, which shocked him 
Uh, so he ran away. So the student never figured out that he used telekinesis to, to pull them to shore. Nice. Uh, I think mine, I just got my national projection, is... I think I was in, I was like out after curfew. I like snuck out of my room and I was like messing around in the school. I was just like, not messing around, but I was just like out wandering the school when I wasn't supposed to be. And I, I think I literally saw something that is unknowable and indescribable. That was so frightening. I thought I died. And it was the first time I like projected my spirit. Oh. I think I like collapsed and was like, and like saw my body and I was like, am I dead? Oh. I feel like, you know, I feel dead. This seems like I'm a ghost. I'm, I'm Caspering right now. <laughs> um, and the thing like came up to my body and then like walked away from it because it seemed dead. And then I just like went back in and was like, I'm Casper. <laughs> <laughs> That's intense. I like it. I love that. So I'm going to say that, uh, Helen at one point had actually tried to sneak out of the school like at night and was just trying to get out and away and got lost on the island and like just lost in all of the like craggy rocks and pine trees and everything and couldn't see the lights of the school couldn't find her way back and then just saw another kid around her age walking through the woods and followed her back to the school and when she got back to the school, the other girl just disappeared. Oh, wow. That was a ghost. Yeah, that would be freaky. All right. So the next prompt says, this made you scared of something. What is your fear? And this doesn't necessarily have to be directly related to the story that you told. We also do have like a random chart for this where you can just roll for a random fear. And sometimes those are great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um. I have one in mind, but I want to roll on the chart. Sure. Uh, go ahead and roll 2d6, and I'll let you know what comes up on the chart. All right. Because that's in a different place. That's in the rule book. So. I have it pulled up, though. Four and a one. All right. A four and a one is the undead. <laughs> oh, that's a lot better than uh, than what I was thinking. I was thinking big storms, but like the undead. The undead are pretty great because uh, you know what? Your fear will come into play at some point yeah. during the game. So mm -hmm. I, I, I guess I can uh, kind of justify that with, you know, saving somebody that was near death mm -hmm. uh, and then like just being like seeing them lay on the on the ground and start to get up after after I pulled them to shore and then running away from that. Yeah. That that's fitting. Nice. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think I am afraid of specifically dark corners and rooms. I think that the school has a lot of corners that shouldn't be dark that seem to never <laughs> illuminate. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't like that. Uh, I I'm gonna say that Helen's actually afraid of ghosts, even though one helped her. Now oh. that she sees them, <laughs> she sees them that's, all the time, and every time it's wild. like, no, not like this again. I know it's a horror game, but I enjoy the idea of like you're like a politician, right? So you're like in political, like offices where like people for sure have died, right, right. And there's just like some ghost, like, hey, Helen's going, oh my god, and they're like, are you gonna do that every time? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> There's someone at the front gate. I was just letting you know. Especially because, like, <laughs> most, like, public service buildings are, like, old, old buildings. Like, most yeah, town yeah. halls and public legislatures and stuff are, like, really old buildings with a lot of history and ghosts in them. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. It's great. And they're just, like, I, I, most of them are just, like, normal people, right? Like, they're not, like, evil spirits. They're just, right. like, yeah. I, I hung out here too long and then I'm guess I'm stuck here. <laughs> Are you going to scream every time I walk into a room? Because I'll just go to a different room. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is yes. Yes, I am. All right. Uh, final prompt. Why do you decide to go to the reunion? And we also do have like a whole relationship mm. like thing where we get to establish yeah. what our interactions are with each other, both okay. in, in the present and in the past. Um which I don't know if we, depending on the time situation, if we want to go through that. I know we're getting close yeah, to time, pretty, Austin, because that one's a little bit yeah. longer. Mm. It is longer, but that's like another aspect of like the creation is like you make the school, 
you you do the characters like you do like what we've done and then you do your relationships mm-hmm. and then you are sort of ready for the game right after that after the relationship sheet and like the reason why you're going then you would start like uh the game and there's like a whole kind of ad libby intro too that depends on like who gets there first mm-hmm. uh yeah then you're just ready you yeah so uh if you wanted to you can basically just answer we can each just answer why did our character decide to go to Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to this reunion yeah we can go through that um gosh because we're being enticed by money yep i i I guess my character is going uh arthur's going based on curiosity uh like why why is uh the academy handing out free money and and who who's the one that donated it? And uh, is is this you know too good to be true? So he's coming in like curious and also cautious. Nice. I'm I'm gonna say that uh, Helen is going partially because she thinks it will look good. Get some photo ops in this old <laughs> prestigious academy that she used to attend, and uh, hopefully some of the other alumni from our graduating year are also have made a name for themselves so I can get some nice photo ops. Um, and also, yeah, the money would be nice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, running a campaign for state legislature is not cheap. No, it's true. I got to print up those little lawn signs. <laughs> I think I'm going because I'm still curious about those rooms with the corners I want to eliminate. <laughs> I should have mentioned at the start that Austin is really good at making this very creepy every time yeah. we play. They always uh. turn the creepy up to the max. <laughs> oh, uh, you know, you know, there's going to be eyes in one of those corners one of these days. Ah, uh. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Why is there two lights in that corner? Oh, uh, no. <laughs> uh, oh, no. Amazing. Uh, so yeah, we we did it. We created some characters. Uh, is there anything else uh, that we needed to do uh, to finish up the characters at all? Uh, you would no. you would select your paper doll, but obviously yeah. that doesn't work in a uh, no. audio format. Audio format. <laughs> but... Exactly. But you take you get a paper doll. You cut it out. If you're like me, you can't someone else to cut it out for you because mm-hmm. I <laughs> can't cut things out to save my life. You spend yeah, I, as much or as little time coloring it as you like. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I see there are they, they do have the the little uniforms and stuff that you can get. Um, mm-hmm. uh, that's very telling of uh, why it's bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's very cool, though. I like this. Wonderful. Uh, this this is delightful. Um, is there anything uh, interesting that you want to point out about the Kickstarter? Uh, that we want to highlight that we haven't gone over? Any fun stretch goals that you have in mind that, that'll be kind of there at first? Or uh, are you just going to hold hold on to things and, and see how things go first? I don't think we have anything to share. Yeah. Yeah. The, the... We're still, we're still uh, working out the finer details in the Kickstarter in that way as of this recording. Um, I lo- we're getting some of the printing done, of, I know, with people over in China, and they were out for the New Year mm. recently, so yeah. we, haven't, we haven't gotten back some quotes, so we haven't been able to finalize, like, some goals, because okay. it depends on, it depends on, like, what it costs, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. But it, it sounds like things are brewing, at least, yes. so, yes. Yeah, so the, that's good. And, and most of the stretch goals, for the most part, are just things like adding um, extra content to the game itself mm. in the form of guest writers and yeah. adding like some more options for characters or like more options yeah, for items. There's, there's nothing like another we haven't talked about anything that's like another thing. Yeah. Okay. But who knows? Uh we could get on a call with banana and banana could have a new grand plan because they're <laughs> they're incredible. They're not here but they're uh incredible designer and mastermind. Yeah, so absolutely. Every, every time we meet we're like, yeah, that's how did you come you came up with that this afternoon. Yep. <laughs> absolutely. Um and when does the Kickstarter go into effect? When does that start? Is there a solidified date or general? The, it's like it's like Jello solid, and that's March fifteenth. <laughs> okay, <Yes>. mid March, <laughs> uh, we'll say. Okay, so uh, Amanda and Austin, thank you so much for joining us to talk about Demos Academy. This was really fun. 
Yeah, thanks so much. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, thanks for having us. I had a lot of fun making characters. Yeah. Uh, Can you remind everyone uh, where they can find you online? Uh, Yeah, you can find me online. Uh, My webcomic is at ageofnight.com, A-G-E-O-F-N-I-G-H-T.com. You can find me on Twitter at Age of Night and on Instagram at Amanda Call Art. You can find me over on Twitter at Sailor Scout Austin. That's at Sailor S-C-T Austin. That's really it. That's where you can find me. I don't have like a website or anything cool just yet. Um, I don't have to put on it when I just write. Like you, I, I can't show you what I wrote. Go buy the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's where I'm at uh, right now. You can find me on Twitter, and that's where I I try to let people know what I'm up to. Absolutely. Uh, wonderful. Well, again, thank you so much for joining us uh, for this special bonus episode of Character Creation Spotlight. And thanks to everyone for tuning in. Uh, Don't forget to check out Deimos Academy Kickstarter, which is coming out very soon. And we will see you next time. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast, or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us, and remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com where you will find other great shows like All My Fantasy Children. Each week, Aaron Katana Saez and Jeff Stormer take a listener submitted prompt and, using some of their favorite tabletop RPGs, create an original fantasy character. Along the way, they share laughs, stories, verbal hugs, and populate a shared universe one story at a time. E. All right. Got some waveforms? <laughs> Ding. Oh, no. There we go. There, it's going now. Is it going? Is it? Is it like uh, just at zero right now? No. Now I'm at nine seconds. Oh, so you're about uh, nine seconds behind. Yeah. Ten seconds behind. I'll fix it in post. It's okay, fine. Sorry. I but knew that was going to happen. That's, it's okay. I knew but, uh, my computer would do it. <laughs> I've had I've had one guest before that that has happened as well. Uh, and it happens. It's fine. It's easy to fix. Okay. As long as it doesn't, like, you know, destroy the audio as well. I, I'm going to hope. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why we have backups. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yay! Uh, So that's it. So we can go ahead and stop the recordings.